I did a previous video about the multiple different ways in which we can control our gain structure from within Studio One. And in that video, one of the different examples that I used was using a VCA channel. Now, there's a feature when working with VCAs in Persona Studio One, which is called Merge VCA Automation. And I figured it was worth its own standalone video because it can be confusing. It's not really confusing. Once you understand it, it's not. But I wanted to focus on a standalone video for that one sp specific topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some different tracks over here and we will color code some of these tracks to make things easier. So to start off with, we have all of these tracks and it doesn't really matter that we don't have anything, um, that we don't have any audio on it because it's just about the principle. Okay, so first of all, in terms of VCA, very easy to do. We right click and we can add a VCA for selected channels. Now, the feature, I've done videos on VCAs before, so you can search my channel to kind of get the ins and outs of, of why they're useful. But the feature that I want to focus on here is the merge VCA automation and when you might consider using it. So I think what we'll do first is I'm going to take all of these channels over here and let me put all of these into touch mode. Okay, so every single one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out my fader port and we'll go back to the beginning and we'll select the very first one and I'm going to press um, play. And as we're playing, I'm going to, I'm going to just going to add different levels of, of automation and it's just going to be random. Okay. So we're adding some here and we'll do this. I'm literally just moving all of these all around. Maybe we'll try to move some of these together and it's just going to look like a mess when I'm done. Okay. So we'll zoom in a little bit. Now, one quick and easy way we can just enable our, our global automation view. Okay, so now let's say that all of these tracks have automation on them, and I'm going to put them now in read mode. So if we take a look at these, nothing's going to play, but we're going to see all these faders are moving. They're going to move at different places. And basically, if I wanted to make an adjustment to any one of these faders, they're all, for the most part, locked at 0 dB, and then we have a couple offsets. So watch what happens if I try to adjust track 4, okay? So it's playing. Let's say that I wanted to bring it down there and then I bring this down and then I bring this one down a little bit and this one down. Okay. Now watch what happens when I push stop. They all just hop back to where they were. This is where the VCA comes in handy because for the VCA, I can offset the volume of everything. I've just gone to minus 22. Now they're still, they still have the same relative changes in terms of the automation. They're still there and I could still automate any one of these. But all I've done is I've created an offset with the VCA fader. Let's say that that automation that I did, I did it when it was alone. And then by the time I added all the rest of the tracks, I said, oh man, I have to turn that down by minus 13.3 in order for it to sound correct. What I could do at that point is I could say, okay, I want that to be the new starting point of this automation. I don't want to have an offset. I want this to just be the new starting point. So in this case, I go merge VCA automation. And now all of these tracks have been brought down by minus 13.3. At this point, we don't even need this VCA anymore. I could remove it. Now, all of these tracks are still um, in read mode and they still have automation on it. We've just used the VCA automation, merge VCA automation to offset that change. So that is one aspect. Okay. Now let's do the same thing again. We're going to right click and we're going to add a VCA for selected channels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up 10 dB and we're going to merge VCA automation. So I've just brought this up by 10 dB now. So now what I'm going to do is keep in mind, all of these tracks have been automated and we can adjust the overall offset with this VCA. But let's say that I want to actually automate this VCA now. So I'm going to put the VCA in touch mode. And now I'm going to do this. So I'm going like this and I'm doing just random movements here. And I'm adding this VCA automation. Notice the gray lines that appear in the background over top of the automation. And let's let this snap back up. Okay. So now notice that we have actually two layers of automation on our source tracks. Okay. We have the layer of automation that we automated on the individual channels or on the individual tracks. And then we have a new kind of in the background, we have a relative offsets between this. So I'm going to stick this VCA in read mode. Now watch what happens here. We have all the automation that was already happening, but they're also following the VCA automation. 
So let's say I said to myself, right, this is my new starting point. Imagine that these were source tracks that we automated individually to blend well with the mix. And then imagine we grabbed that VCA fader and we blended the whole section. It could be backgrounds, it could be horns, it could be string section. We automated the whole thing to fit in context with everything in the mix. So now at this point, I say to myself, okay, I want now, I want this to be merged into the actual source tracks and I want to free up my VCA fader again to be able to do a, a relative offset, but just static. So we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to now merge my VCA automation and now check this out. Our automation is now a representation of the individual automation that we had on the individual tracks plus the VCA automation that we had that we had written, and now our VCA fader allows us to make a static offset again. So now look, I could bring this down to minus 13, and you can go as deep as you want with this. So that is one use for VCA automation. And if I'm trying to perfect something, especially when I'm dealing with different horns and you know string sections or different sections of instruments or background singers, and I want to showcase different, I, I got my compression, my EQ, and it's overall it's sitting nicely, but certain words I want to pop out a little bit more, then I'll run my automation on the source channels, and then I might run a passive automation with the VCA to get the level sitting a bit better, and then I might merge that automation, which is kind of where we are left now, and then I might be finessing my mix, and then I'm using my fader port to just perfect it. So I say like, oh, that's great, but the artist says, you know what, can we bring everything down by like 4 dB, that whole section, or 4.5? Boom, I've just done that. As I'm getting mix revisions, I will use this VCA, but then if, if I get sign off, then at that point, I might just merge that VCA automation again. So that is dealing with like complex automation where you have automation on the source tracks, and then you wanna automate all of those tracks together that are already automated, and then you wanna make a static adjustment, you continuously can merge your VCA automation. Now that is one um, approach. I'm gonna now bring up a set of new tracks and let's say for these tracks that we're going to make these a different color. So these are going to be green. I'm going to now link these out of VCA for selected channels. This is something that, um, how do I put this? How do I put this? I, I'm a little confused at why it does this, but if you understand what it is, you can easily undo it. Let's say that I have a bunch of tracks and instead of selecting all of these tracks and creating a group, I prefer to use a VCA. So let's say that we're working with our whole entire arrangement. This is the automation, these tracks, and let's, for argument's sake, let's make these all a little bit different. So let's say that they all have their own relative level. And now I'm listening to everything. And instead of using a group track, I want to use a VCA. So let's say that I say to myself, okay, I want to place this perfectly in the mix. And I go like this and I say, boom, that's perfect. Okay, I need it to bring it down. Minus 6.8, that's perfect. What I can do is I can still merge the VCA automation, even though these tracks are not automated. So I can right click merge VCA automation. Now these all go into read mode, but notice that if we enable our our global automation, that there's no automation that's written. So I'm not sure why they go into read mode, but it's very easy to just select all of them and say, okay, we'll turn this off. And now I've given these a new level. Now, that is a way that we can basically just change the level. But sometimes if I don't have automation on tracks per se, and I'm using a VCA to offset something, I don't necessarily, if, if it's just being used to offset it and that becomes the new level, then I wanna actually write that as a new level. That's when I would use the merge VCA option and then just change all of these back from read into off. And then if I wanted to automate any of these further, I could do so. And then honestly, at that point, if I'm happy with the level, unless I feel like I'm gonna need to access this VCA to, to fine tune this level later on, I might not even need it. So I could technically remove that. Um, the reason I always merge it is, I'm, I haven't tested it recently, but there was one point that if you made a static offset with the VCA fader and removed it, that it would bring you back to levels before. I haven't tested it recently though. It's been a very long time since I tested that, but I just get into the habit of running uh, the merge VCA automation function anytime that I use a VCA fader. Now, one other thing to point out is let's bring our VCA back again, right click, add VCA for selected channels. Maybe the static level of these is all sitting in a really, really nice place. 
but I want to be able to um, I want to be able to automate all of these together, but I leave myself the freedom. In that case, none of these have automation. I can put the VCA fader in touch mode, and I'll automate this VCA fader. And we're going to do some drastic movements here just to kind of like demonstrate this. And I'm going to push stop. Now we'll put the VCA in read. Check out what's happening here. None of these tracks, none of them have automation written, but watch what happens. These VCAs, or this VCA is controlling the level of all these tracks, even though none of them have automation. This is another useful feature because then, because these don't have automation, but they're reacting to the VCA automation, we're now doing kind of the reverse order that we did at the beginning because each of these individual tr channels, I could still tweak the levels, right? And then the automation that's happening, the reacting to the VCA automation, which is in read mode, I still have the ability to change the levels of these tracks. So they're reacting to everything in, in its entirety, exactly what's happening with the VCA. But if I say like, oh, the overall level of this 3.6, no, I want this to be like minus 8.4. It's going to use that as a starting point and that VCA automation that it's, that it's reacting to, it will be relative to the level. And then, of course, we know from, you know, the previous examples, if I want to commit to this automation, um, then I can merge the VCA automation. And now these tracks that didn't used to have any automation, they all will have automation now if, if I actually pull them down. They're in read mode. Let me go like this. Uh, we need to go H, H. We're just viewing the automation lines here. So now all of these tracks have automation because we merged that VCA automation. And because we merged the VCA automation and it's still connected, we can now offset those levels either up or down, right? And that's all relative, keep in mind. So hopefully this helps demystify that feature. Um, really useful tool. Um, a lot of the time I will use VCAs in place of groups because it allows me to control the level using one fader. And on the fader port, we also have a button I push the button for VCA, I only see my VCAs. So technically speaking, I could have a track that has 200 tracks and it has maybe seven VCA groups or seven VCAs are controlling everything. I can balance the whole mix using just my VCA faders. But the benefit of using a VCA fader to control the level and then merging it is that it's very easy and we don't necessarily have to uh, commit to being in read mode on the source tracks. If before we merge it, we can leave that open, then we can adjust these individual levels as needed. So really, really useful feature. Anyways, I hope that helps and we'll catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.